We're going to continue with our discussion in an introduction to electrical engineering by looking at uh, circuits that are driven by AC, or sinusoidal voltages. My name is Lee Brinton. I'm an electrical engineering instructor at Salt Lake Community College. In these next few videos, we'll be introducing or looking at power as it, as it uh, pertains to AC systems, systems driven by sinusoidally varying sources consisting of resistance, capacitance, and inductance. We'll start out with a discussion of instantaneous power under these circumstances and then introduce what's known as average power, or P, the reactive power, or Q, and we'll look at the uh, ramifications of P and Q in resistors, inductors, and capacitors. We'll then talk about something known as a power factor. We'll introduce, introduce a notion of complex power and then look at one application of this power, these power calculations that uh, is known as power factor correction. In systems that are driven by AC signals or AC sources, both the current and the voltage are functions of time. Thus power, which is equal to the product of the current times the voltage, will also be a function of time. We're going to refer to this time function of power as the instantaneous power. In general, the current and the voltage will not have the same phase angles. We're going to represent V, the time varying voltage, as this with its phase, theta sub V. And similarly, the current will be represented thus with its phase angle, theta sub I. And power then, the instantaneous power, a function of time, will be equal to the voltage times the current. Let's consider these three graphs here. In this first one, we have the current and voltage aligned in phase. They cross the zero axis at the, or they cross zero, go through zero at the same instances. They're both positive at the same time, they're both negative at the same time, so that voltage and current, or voltage times current, positive times positive gives us positive, Negative times negative gives us negative. And for the situation or the case when the phase of the current and the, is equal to the phase of the voltage, the power will always be positive. Remember, positive power is power that is delivered from the circuit to the device. Now look what happens when we allow the phase angles of the two of the voltage and current to be different. In this case, the um, voltage is leading the current by 30 degrees. They no longer line up exactly. And in some instances, you've got a positive voltage and a negative current so that the product of the two then give us a negative power. For at least this short part of the cycle, the power is negative. We understand that to mean that the power is being delivered from the device back into the circuit. So you have a positive part where power is being dissipated by the device, but part of the time, part of that cycle, the power or the energy in the device is being pushed back into the circuit. Consider in the extreme case where the current and voltage are different by 90 degrees. In this case, one is positive, one is negative. One is negative and negative. But note that the net effect is that you have a positive lobe for half the cycle, a negative lobe for half the cycle. And it turns out that the positive, the amount of energy put in during this half of the cycle is equal to the amount of energy delivered by from the device back into the circuit during that half of the cycle. And we're going to see that the average power under these circumstances is actually zero. Now let's introduce the concept of average power. Well, in some instances, we're interested in what is happening instantaneously with the power, knowing what the power is as a, defined as a function of time. But there are other situations, for example, when you've got an AC motor driving, and it's, you turn it on, it ramps up, and it's now met its, or into its steady state, and it's going to just run um, without a lot of change until you turn it off. Under those circumstances, the instantaneous current and voltage that's taking place as a function of time really isn't of much interest to us, or may not be of much interest. And what may be of more interest is the average power that that motor is able to drive or to, to um, 
convert from electrical energy to mechanical energy. For example, if we have a five horsepower motor, it's up to speed, it will deliver five horsepower of mechanical energy to the shaft as long as the motor is on. Thus we now define the average power. The average power is simply the integral of the instantaneous power over one period divided by the length of the period. So it's effectively it's the average value of the power over one period of time.